Welcome to Clarity and Purpose. Our world is full of people who are overworked and overwhelmed. They lose focus on what matters, struggle to find a vision for the future, and lose time with those they love. We help businesses and their teams clearly understand their purpose and help them communicate more effectively. I'm your host, James Thorne. I'm here with my co-host, Jake Jordan. Hey, Jake. What is up, James? Hey, man. Do you play Monopoly? Sometimes. Hence. Okay, so maybe you're not a board game guy, but Monopoly, what's the, I mean, what's the strategy behind Monopoly? Oh, uh, well, like get all the property and get all the money and bankrupt everybody, right? That's right. <laughs> yeah, my, I love the game. Everyone that plays with me hates playing with me, so I end up not ever playing because that's what I do. All my strategies to try to connive you out of your properties, work cool. to get all the money. Dude, I, growing up, my parents used to say, um, you, uh, you're, you, I was I love to be the banker because I would steal the money. And <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> that guy, <laughs> I'm not totally that guy, but, um, they bought this game for us when we were younger called Bibleopoly. Okay. Ever, ever heard of it? I can't say I have. I don't think many people have. I'm sure 1% of Christians heard of it. And the the whole concept of the game was the way to win was to give the most away. Oh. I, I hated it. it. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> what is the point of this? <laughs> I hated it because I had to work at trying to help other people win. Okay. And that's how I won. And it was the worst game I ever played. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but, I remember when I was younger, Zig Ziglar was okay. big in my household, and he said that you can get anything you want by helping his other people get what they want. No, yeah, no, that's true. And I'm a Christian, and I, you know, that's in the Bible uh, to bless is to give and to receive. But right. it's so it's such against our human nature, right? Yep. Like yep. it's totally against who we are. We're born selfish, greedy people. Oh yeah, and we want more. Oh yeah. Um, but that's what I love about our guest today. Yeah. yeah. So I got to well, interview. He's funny. He's funny oh, too. So that's good. It's, it's always nice to have a guest that's funny. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. He's so funny. Um, you'll love hearing some of his stories. Um, but that's what I love about our guest today. He has really turned the tide on what people would probably say, yeah, I totally get that. But they don't mm -hmm. do it because it goes against right. our grain and our human nature to right. give away. And we're not just talking about giving away resources and gifts and whatever. That's good too. We're talking about our time, our most valuable asset. Mm -hmm. um, so let's go ahead and introduce our guest like we do every week. This intro is shorter than usual because it's to the point, clear, and just like what he does. So here we go. Most companies speak about their brand with the clarity of middle school boys asking a girl to the dance. As an expert marketing consultant, writer, and speaker, he has helped over 100 organizations say the right things to their audience and is helping brands figure out their messaging so more customers buy and revenue grows. Hailing from Atlanta with wife and two kids and one on the way, I'm excited to introduce Wes Gay. What is up, Wes? You're doing good. Oh, you're muted still, I think. Are you muted? Is that you or me? Yeah, that's awkward. Hey, hey. <laughs> He's like, hey, you were just making sure because you were, I, know, I saw you laughing in the background, so you're just making sure it wasn't coming through, which is fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, yeah, thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Glad to be here. Yeah, and just so y'all know, which is awesome about this life motto, we literally just met for the first time 30 minutes ago, so we're just now interacting, getting to know each other, so this is a lot of fun. Yeah, Um really. All right, Wes, so you can talk about yourself now. Tell us a little bit about you and where, where you come from. Well, uh, yeah, born and raised in the South, lived in Florida until I was nine, lived in South Alabama until I was, uh, went, I graduated college down there too. Uh, worked for about 10 years in the nonprofit space, in churches and nonprofits, and then for the last three and a half years, I've been doing something called the StoryBrand Framework, which you and I were talking about beforehand. You guys are big fans of. That's how I know Chris, one of the folks on your team. Uh, helping people. I started in 2016 as one of their copy is a certified copywriter. Now I run one of their certified agencies. Worked with a ton of brands. Worked, was with the company, a couple of companies today, even before this call, just helping them figure out what do we need to say so that people buy. I mean, we're in a world where, you know, everything is visual, right? Every you know, Instagram's big, and there's a lot of live videos like this one, and 
we watch a lot of YouTube content, et cetera, but never in the history of the world, I think, have words mattered more. I mean, when we're recording, when we're live right now, we've seen it over the last 10 days, what has happened nationally when different leaders, whether it's our president, whether it's been federal leaders, national, state, or state, local, whatever it is, their words have altered the courses of some of these protests and some of the other things going on. And words matter at every level of life. They matter in our marketing and in our business. And if we're going to grow our businesses and make more money, we have got to get the words right. And too many companies just, man, it's a big swing and a miss. So that's what I do. I help brands do that. And we use the story brand framework to make it happen because element storytelling is how the human brain is wired to better receive information. It's how it makes sense of the world. You know, stories are and story elements are how people get elected. It's how people believe nonsense. Like I used to tell people from 2006, 2010, that Shamu was a robot. The big well down in Orlando. I, I worked for a nonprofit down there that every summer in college and for a year after college, by the way, if I keep looking that way, it's because my dog is over there and I don't nice. want him to lose his mind because he is so very loud when he gets <laughs> rowdy. So I want to keep him under control. Anyways, I worked for a nonprofit that did uh, le leadership development events for middle and high school kids. And so every week we had new groups come in, churches, schools, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And um, we would take them to SeaWorld, do behind the scenes tours. They'd see the Shamu show, do ride the rides and all that. Well, about week four of my first year, I got kind of bored with our routine. And so I thought, I'm just going to start telling people that Shamu is the robot. So I concocted this whole story. And I didn't know it then, but I later discovered it was the same. That was the same year I used to tell people I was an underwater firefighting major. Is that if you use, if you create a good story, people will actually believe anything. Like they'll go years thinking Shamu is a robot. They'll think, <laughs> they'll spend a, I had people convinced my whole first semester of college I was an underwater firefighting major, which is so ludicrous. <laughs> but if you just create a good story, it's amazing how people will believe it, regardless of whether or not it's true. Man, it happens all the time. Hey, let's take a quick break from our interview and talk about something a lot of people are going through right now. There are a lot of people that hit a major slowdown during the COVID crisis. Many of our clients came to us and said, sales are down and we're looking to have to lay people off, possibly sell buildings or other assets. Is there anything we can do to get momentum back in the business? The good news is the items are actually helping our clients and we wanted to help other people with the advice that we gave them. So we built a guide you can download for free called Grow Again. What you do in your business when you get hit by the unexpected. We want you, the audience, to have it too. It contains seven videos that explain the strategies we shared with our clients. It has four screen shares that show you exactly how we apply the techniques to our business. And it has four worksheets and scripts that you can literally pick up today and use yourself. So go to quirkgrowth.com slash grow again and download your copy today. All right, let's get back to the interview. We try our best to see like, man, what can we do to give away? Um, in this noisy world, how can brands stand out without spending a ton on marketing? Like what, what would you say um, in that theme as far as without spending a ton on marketing? Yeah, I'd say the, you know, one of the things that we think about with marketing is that it's always a dollar investment, right? We say, oh, I got to have this kind of ad budget for pay-per-click ads or Facebook ads or whatever. But for a the vast majority of businesses, if you're not even I would say for the service based businesses, people who are in knowledge work, but even frankly, product businesses, one of the things you can do is if you don't have money is invest a little bit of time. And the number one thing you can do with your time is go to where your audience is and start answering their questions. Hmm. Right. So that might be on LinkedIn. It could be on Instagram. It could be on Twitter. It could be on Facebook. And it's more than likely going to be on somewhere like a YouTube, but specifically your website. Right. Just simply answer questions because we were talking about this before we started the live. We have never had access to more information, but yet we've never been more uninformed. Right. <laughs> just think about it. I mean, forget politics and current events aside, aside, like just think about trying to fix something in your house. Right. The toilet is making a funny noise and you can't Google my toilet's making a funny noise. Right. That's not really going to help you. It's like we have access to all this information. But we don't want to get to it. Right. Part of the problem is you have something going on with your toilet and you don't necessarily have to fix it. You're going to go to the internet, right? We had right. a problem. I had a problem a couple of several months ago with, a, with our the sink in our kitchen faucet, and I couldn't I couldn't figure out what was going on. And uh, and so I went on I wound up on YouTube and watched a video of like what the problem was. Like, oh, okay, that makes a ton of sense, right? 
and it was from a plumbing company. Now they're not based in Atlanta where I live. If right. they were, I probably would use those guys next time because I realized they were smart enough to spend three minutes on a YouTube video explaining a yeah. problem that I have. All right. So think about the problems that people have. And some a lot of people might get stuck here. I mean, you and I are in a content business. We're constantly coming up with this stuff for other people. Right. So I try to think about if I'm a business owner, I would say, what is it, what is the thing you sell? Let's say you're a financial advisor. Right. What are questions people have? You could come up with a thousand of what people have about the market, about good investment strategies, planning yeah. strategies, all the legal stuff, tax avoidance, or not tax avoidance, that's a bad thing. Reduced <laughs> tax liability is the right. word we use with financial advisors because <laughs> tax avoidance sounds like Al Capone. Um, uh, but see, it's like think about the specific questions and then just answer those questions. Right. Some people may say that you should charge people for your knowledge and expertise. And you will charge them when they come to you and ask you to do it for them. Right. Because most of the time, you can give away everything you know and do. But at the end of the day, people are still going to come to you and say, can you just do it for them? Because they're gonna, they want your expertise that they could never get in a video or a blog series. They're going to want you to just do it and take that responsibility off their plate. Right. So uh, the biggest thing you can do is just start answering questions and giving value. Right. My theory is if you give away value you'll always be valuable, right? And if you're valuable, that means there's always a price tag that's going to come with it, right? You right. May not have, you're not going to be 100% with the people who you give stuff away to who then you hire you. Even if you're 20%, 15%, you can build a pretty good business that way. No, that's good. What What are some of the little practical ways people can do it? Let's say they, they can't make a video or don't have the uh -huh. resource to do so. What, what's some of the little practical ways they can do that? Yeah, so let's let's continue with the financial advisor, right? A lot of right. people aren't comfortable on video. They may have the resources. They just scares them to death. <laughs> that, that red button just sends terror <laughs> down their spine. Uh, it's like if they're Indiana Jones walking into a room full of snakes. So I would say the first thing I would do is think about where what what social media platform is your audience most likely on? Are they is it LinkedIn? I'm getting more into LinkedIn lately. I yeah. Because it's less ridiculous than the other ones, <laughs> which I appreciate. <laughs> it's just business stuff. It's straightforward. None of, <laughs> none of the nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> and if anybody brings nonsense, they get shut down. In yeah, the seriously. <laughs> it's so fun. But think. let's say you're on LinkedIn, right? So, sit, so think about, uh, if I'm a financial advisor, what is one specific question I have heard from a client or prospect in the last two weeks? Or what's something going on as it relates to finances that... I haven't found a good answer yet that I know my clients aren't finding a good answer for or that I think people are going to misunderstand, right? So one of those two things. What's something that people are asking you or what's something people might misunderstand? Think of that question and get really clear on the question. So um, I've got a financial advisor in California, Southern California right now, and that's one of the things he and I have talked about every week. He's actually making PowerPoint slides with kind of a weekend review of what in the world just happened. And he's, doing, he's recording himself on a Zoom call walking through those slides and that's it no camera nothing You're just explaining stuff and then sending that to his clients but you might think about what is a specific question and then go on linkedin or facebook and then start with the question in in quotation marks and then answer it right tell me why uh what the problem is that that question addresses explain what i may not know and then tell me what i either need to do or tell me the things i specifically need to know about that thing, right? Tell me, so either way, end with either action or information. But give me something clear and concise that I can that's tangible to me. The worst thing you can do is give people stuff that like you get through it and they go, okay, now what? Right? Don't right. leave with a now what. In that vein, now Wes, I want you to give some examples and reasons like why generosity has been so effective for you. Yeah. So for me, I started this business a little over three and a half years ago. I'd been unemployed uh, for about six months. I was, we were talking about before the call. It just hit me today. I was in the middle of the greatest economy in the history of the world, and I couldn't get a job. That is, <laughs> that is an embarrassing reality, and it's really unfortunate. So anyways, I started a brand new job. Or I started basically my own business in a thing I had never done before, which is working for myself, specifically with marketing and copywriting. I'd always been worked in nonprofits and churches. And so I needed a way to promote myself and show that I was, as we talk about a lot, the guide. I had the authority and the expertise to help people. But I didn't have the, the portfolio. I didn't have the background. And so I thought, how do I do that? Or how do I build that? Well, what if I just do it for people? Hmm. What if I just, instead of telling them why they should hire me, I just show them. And so 
uh, I got certified by StoryBrand on a Monday and Tuesday in October of 2016. Got home Tuesday night, Wednesday morning, woke up, and I was in a panic because we had a two-year-old, a six-month-old, lived in my mother-in-law's house, been unemployed for six months, and had nowhere to go. Already had debt. Now I had $5,000 more in debt from the certification. I thought, oh, man, this better work. <laughs> So I get up on that Wednesday morning and I log into Slack. There was a Slack workplace for anybody who had gone through a store brand event at that point. And there was a channel in there called Peer Feedback. And I thought, well, voila, this, these are my people. These are people asking about their websites, their emails, their lead magnets, their one-liners, all that stuff. And I am now uniquely qualified by, by the power of Essendon store brand <laughs> as one of their certified people. And so I just started to show up and I was like, I'm just going to answer their questions. I don't want to be that sleazy sales guy. I've never been a pushy sales guy. That's just not me. It, it annoys me. So I know it annoys other people and I just don't want to be what annoys me. And so I just started answering questions. That was it. And within a three days or a week, I had a client and I quoted that client more than almost as much as I'd ever made in a month. And I almost passed out when she said yes. Looking back, she said yes too fast. So I didn't charge enough. <laughs> but that is that's another that's another place we all learn we all learn <laughs> and then within six weeks i had six different uh i had six clients i was we were blown and going full time and it just took off that's but cool. i learned the more i just answer people's questions the more i just tell them what they need to know i mean mm -hmm. literally today i was on two zoom calls with people and i walked them through their home pages and said if you hired literally if you hired me here's exactly what i would do and here's exactly what your website would say and here's how exactly how i'd lay it out now, could, do we charge people to do that for them? Yeah, right. Did I spend in 45 minutes or an hour today doing that for two people? Yeah. Are they going to become clients? Probably not. Oh, well. Like, I gave them great value. I tried to serve them as best I could. If it comes back and they hire me, great. Yeah. If not, I'm going to keep doing it because I know it works. You, you get a chance to demonstrate your skills. In a world where, in a social media world, where everybody is screaming about how great they are at stuff, we need people to just start showing others how good they are and stuff. Yeah. Like, don't just post on Instagram or Facebook about it. Literally show me the work you're doing and explain it to me and walk me through it and demonstrate your skills. You're going to get much further than going any other way. That's good. That's really good. Well, Wes, that was, that was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it I feel, was. <laughs> I feel like it was fun. <laughs> um, okay, I'm going to plug what you mentioned again earlier. I'm going to actually show the screen with your websites on it. Um, Okay, westgay.com, okay guys? Yep. And then hirewayfinder.com. Just check out either one of those. Um, connect with Wes and what he's doing is anyone who watches this video, you shoot him an email, wes at westgay.com. Send him any collateral you want him to look at. It could be a website, it could be a print piece, um, it could be a uh, PowerPoint, whatever, whatever you're thinking might be helpful for your business today. Send that to him and he's gonna review it absolutely free. So I would do that because it's great. Um, and he, he does what we do and we say go to Wes, guys. He's incredible. So um, well, I'm, I'm excited to see what this does for you, but also for us to stay connected. Um, I'm glad that Chris brought us together. Um, but is there anything else that you want to share in this vein or with the audience? Um, I don't think so. I mean, again, okay. send me an email. I'll review anything you got. I'm glad to help you any way I can. Cool. Well, guys, uh, there's no point going any longer if we've made our point because I think that it was great. So get out there, put some content in front of people, start giving things mm -hmm. away. Let us know how it works because we know it's going to. Wes, this is the fun part. We get to close yeah. out in a dance. So this is he was very excited about this when I told him. So we're excited to do uh, this. I am, I am ready to perform the hitch <laughs> is what I call it. Just stay right here. All right. Here we go. And... There it is. There it is. You don't need no. You don't need no pizza. You don't. I got food there. <laughs> James, I told you, Shamu is a robot. Do it. it. I, I love Shamu. I was so sad to hear that. Yeah, yeah, but, but that's you the know, power story, right? It is. It is, man. And and I've been there. I've been multiple times in my life. People have told me things, or I've actually been on the the giving end of just like coming up with a whopper, and people <laughs> believe you. Like totally true crazy man yeah story is powerful it's what we do i mean we're helping our clients really create a story for their business uh for people to jump into that journey with them um but i i think the most powerful piece to me still is just going back to that like giving of your time and your resources mm -hmm. really asking yourself what is it that i can do for someone else today maybe it's taking an hour like he does daily to just mm -hmm. spend with someone and totally do what he would do for people to pay 
And that's, you know, we, we think of that strategically, even being in advertising and marketing where we're like, okay, we're going to not give away what we would sell, but we're going to give away some knowledge. And then, then they come bring us to actually do the work. But he's like, let's just do the work for an hour. I'm going to show you what to do. So that's right. I think what's cool about that too is, uh, you know, like if you really think about people and human nature is people just want you to do stuff for them. So you can tell them everything. You can open the kimono and give them the whole thing. And it's like, that's really awesome. Can you just do it for me? Right. So (laughs) I love that. Like, let's just do it and then give pieces away. So uh, I hope that was meaningful for you. I hope you got something from that today. We love Wes Gay. I'm glad to have him on the interview. But hey, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you subscribe, hit that little bell, that little ding, ding, ding. Make sure you know when these things drop every week. But uh, we're so glad you're here and joining with us every week. But thank you so much for joining us every week where, hey, we believe when a business leader aligns their team with their message, they become unstoppable.